phone call. Larry and I will be in the country, so we'll miss any birthday celebration. Anyway, you're 35. Who wants to celebrate being that old? Well, I only hope I look as good as you do when I'm your age. Hey, Robo, it's Larry. Get those girls out of your bed and pick up the phone. God, I'm so envious I can't even talk. Call me. Hi, Robert, it's April. Hi, Bobby. It's Jamie. I just called to say that if I'm late for the party tonight, can you please tell Pam that I'm... Oh, wait, you're not supposed to know that there's a... a Judy? J Judy, are you there? Oh, I'm sorry. Just ignore this call. You're never going to believe what I just did. Yo, Bob. It's Smarta. Long time no here. Well, the doctor said, false alarm, I am not pregnant. So, hey, you can feel free to return my calls again, huh? Hi, uh, it's, it's Bob. Yes, today is my birthday. And yes, you may leave a message about how happy you are that I'm turning 35. And whatever you're calling about, my answer is yes. Yeah, to close your eyes and blow them all out. 
Make sure you make it a good one, Robert. Um. <laughs> you still get your wish, Bobby. He still gets his wish. He does? That must be a new rule. Sure you do. <laughs> of course you do. Oh, I, I know it. I, I will. I actually didn't wish for anything. <laughs> He's kidding. You've got to be kidding. Go well, on anyway. Don't tell it. Tell it, it's dirty. They say you're not supposed to tell it. That's right. Don't tell. Anyway, Robert, you're in your prime. 35. Very hush. You're not supposed to tell a person's age at our ages.
There's cinnamon in the coffee, Robert. The olive taste is cinnamon. Sugar and cream? Uh, both. <laughs> may I please have lots of both? Of course you may. Do you want some brandy in it, Robert? Are you having some? Oh, we don't drink, but you have some, you sweetheart. Go ahead. Or do you want a real drink? We have anything you want. Well, Harry, if you don't mind, can I have some bourbon? Right? Sweetheart. Hey. You're not both on the wagon, are you, Sarah? You're not on the wagon. Goodness, Robert, all these questions. Or do you just collect trivia like some old quiz of investment? We spent half of our lives with you, and you now realize that Harry Little Wagon? A year and a half. No, love, just a year. It was a year in February. It's a year and a half now. I know for a fact next month will be a year. And a half. One year counts it. One. Harry got arrested for being drunk and put on some kind of humiliation. <laughs> I quit because I wanted to see if I could is actually what happened. Come on, Robert, I must have told you about all that. Never, I never would have brought a bourbon. How are you arrested? See, another question. Why don't you have one of these brownies you brought? I was in California on business and I got really soused one night. These guys drove me back to my hotel. Instead of going in, I went down the corner to get something to eat to you sober up. You said it was three blocks. No, just the corner. Three blocks. Anyway, this patrol car stopped me and said, you're drunk. I said, drunk. Water. They said, well, take me in. Take me to my hotel, for God's sake. I mean, I'm just around the corner. Three blocks away. Anyway, they mugged me in with me for being drunk. Unbelievable. And then, Robert, the very next time I was out there, I got arrested all over again. Drunk driving. I only had wine. Only three bottles. And I insisted on taking the drunk test. I flunked by one point. And that is when you quit precious. He always thinks it was the first arrest, but really, it was the second. We never told you that. Curious. I thought Harry told everyone. Anyway, I quit to see if I had a drinking problem, and I don't. Yes, a problem drinking. <laughs> do, you, do you ever miss it? See how you talk questions? Harry, do you miss it? No. No, I really don't. Yes. Yes, he really does. Hi, darling. Anyway, I quit. I haven't had a drink since. Whoops. What's whoops? I haven't had a drink since. And she leaned toward his plate. <laughs> a toast, for God's sake. Sorry, Robert, you must have noticed how staggering falling down drunk I got from one swallow of champagne. I never said you got drunk, but you did have the champagne. A swallow! One swallow! I was gone. An elephant swallow. Well, well I'd like to ask for another bourbon, but uh, I'm terrified. Oh, but darling, Robert, put a nipple on the bottle for all the care. Are you sure you don't want one of these around me? God, no, Cyril. Bust. Bust? You bust? Your bones, skin and bones. I know what you want, Cyril goes the other way. Bye, this. Oh, thank you, Sarah. I'm touched and honored. And I think I was just insulted. Well, Robert, I was hoping you'd have just one brownie so I could watch. Sarah, is it possible for you to become like a, a food lawyer? Mexican food. What I crave without cease is Mexican food. Don't eat that brownie! I'm not eating it! I'm just smelling it! Oh, Robert, you have one. <laughs> not with bourbon. Man, chocolate. I'd kill for chocolate. Or, or hot sour to bread with all the butter there is, or hot, a baked potato with, with sour cream and chives. Chili. Just make you rise. Chili. Chili, oh dear God, yes, chili. Manicotti. Manicotti, one teaspoon of manicotti. Sara Lee cake. Sara Lee cake. Sara Lee, the most phenomenal woman since Eleanor Roosevelt. How about sweet and sour shrimp? How about sweet and sour anything? <laughs> I, I take it uh, you two are on diets? Not me, Sarah. Look at these pants. You could put your old fist in there. That's how much weight I've lost. She always does that. Look, I can put my fist in my pants too, you know. <laughs> she thinks I buy them. I've lost eight pounds already, darling. It's the magazines, Robert. Have you ever taken a look at any of these women's magazines? Pages and pages of uh, cakes and pies and roasts and potatoes. I bet Sarah subscribes to about 40 magazines. It's a sickness. We are up to our ass in magazines. I read them all. Don't. You. Wrestling. She even subscribes to a magazine on wrestling. It's not wrestling, it's karate. Karate. Wouldn't you like to see it? All those middle-aged women in Sarah's gym learning karate. What would you give to see that? Surprisingly enough, darling, I'm terribly good at it. Well, how long have you been studying? The last five questions. Oh, Robert, seven months. Show us some karate. No. Robert, would you like some coffee, love? You, Harry? No. I want some karate. 
I want to see how my money is being wasted. No. Oh, come on, do one thing. No. Sarah, I, I bet you're excellent. I would give anything to see just one. I'll be your partner. No. Fine, I got all right. Hooray! One throw. I can be your partner. Okay. So I'll, I'll come at you.
Bass again. I'll get the lights. I'll get them, I always do. No, you don't. Oh, Harry. I love you. Harry, you, you ever sorry you got married?
Southern graciousness, there just ain't much of that around these parts. I mean, really, you two are, he said, with envy, just a terrific pair. Really beautiful together. And Patty, if you ever leave her, I want to be the first to know. Well, you're the first to know. We're getting to the horse. He's having to let you in yet. <laughs> oh. I'm so surprised. Well, maybe you'll work things out, huh? I don't think so, okay. Well, uh, well you know, I'm, I'm sure no one can imagine how you feel. Or you feel. Or I feel. Feel? I don't feel anything. Hey, Dana, I don't care anymore. It's too small, that's too small. It probably doesn't work anymore. Do you feel anything, Dana? Do you, honey? Because I don't. You will. When? I mean, we've had two for heaven's sake. I think it depends on a person's constitution. Don't you, Dana? Well, listen, I think it's always good to try everything once. Just wait. I'm not planning on going anywhere. Maybe I'm too dumb or square, but honestly, I don't care anything. It's not a thing. I mean, I wish I did. I don't do you, because I don't. They probably gave me real grass right off the front lawn. I knew I couldn't see anything, though. I don't have that kind of constitution. Why am I talking so much? <laughs> You're stoned. Hello? Hello? I am not. <laughs> I am. Are you? <laughs> you are not. I'm so dry. You're stoned. Is that part of it? You'll probably get hungry, too. Yes. Should I feel that, too? No, you don't have to feel anything. Are you hungry, Dana? No, I'd like some water, though. Yes, me too. Do you want anything, Robert? No, thank you. What? <laughs> I, I already have some, Jenny. Thank you. Some what, Robert? <laughs> you asked him, honey. Water? Oh, water. <laughs> I can't remember what we were talking about! <laughs> See? You forget when you're high. Oh, God, dude! <laughs> <laughs> wow! Freedom. We 
which is everything, huh? No, this is everything. I've got my wife, my kids, a home. I feel that, uh, well, you, you gotta give up to get. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Listen, I, I agree, but you know, okay, the thing that bothers me is if you marry, then you've got another person there all the time. You're caught. See, okay, plus you can't get out of it whenever you just want to get out of it. And even if you do get out of it, what do you have to show for it? Not to mention the fact that then you've always been married. I mean, you, you can't have a right not being married again. I don't think you're really ready. <laughs> but do you think, I mean, subconsciously, you're resisting? No. No, I have no resistance, no blocks. I am ready to be married. So why aren't you? Well, I, I always had things I wanted to accomplish. I don't know. For, first there was school, and then I, I wanted to get some semblance of security before I could even begin to think in terms of marriage. And I, okay, I know that sounds like rationalization, but it's not. And plus, you know, I wanted to have some fun before I settled down. Right. And you've done all those things. Right. Right. So why am I not married? Wow, okay, taking me on a bummer. <laughs> you just wait though, you, you are gonna see some major changes in my life. I mean, I meet girls all the time. All you gotta do is live in New York and you meet a woman a minute. And I've met some real special ladies recently. I mean, okay, I'm dating this flight attendant. Cute, original, uh, odd. And then there's Kathy. You guys never met Kathy. Oh, now Kathy. Best. And then there's Marta. God, is she fun. You know, I'm certainly not resisting marriage. I, I mean it when I say my life is totally prepared for a gigantic change in it right now. I'm ready to be married. Right? So why aren't you?
ones of you sons of bitches wants to help me? And then kiss my ass. <laughs> oh boy. Did you light another? No, just a cigarette. Shall I roll another one? Maybe one. No. I can pull another one in just a second. No. Is there more? I don't think so. It'll just take me a second to roll another one. I don't think so either. Listen, you two have one. I don't want one. You have one if you want one, but I don't. I'll get us some food. Isn't she a marvelous woman? I married a square. A confessed square. Bobby, we're just too old for that stuff. We were just trying to keep up with the kids tonight. Goodness, have we been there? Who wants to go back? But anyway, what do I know? Hey, screwball, I'm starving. I love you so much. Good. And Bobby, put that stuff away. Come on, put your pocket pick on. Come on. Thank you. I don't know. Maybe you were right. Whoever knows. What was that about? She doesn't go for it. I thought she wouldn't go for she it. She didn't like it? I know her. She didn't. She was stoned. Not really. She doesn't get things like that. I mean, she'll go along with it, but that's about it. You don't want to get you some? She'd have a fit. I'm really surprised she did it tonight. She loved it. For me. She loved it for me. She didn't really love it. She's what she said. Square. Dumb.
touching and dreaming. Joel. Yeah. 
Kathy. Fascinating. Do you come here a lot, huh? Yeah, maybe next week we can uh, go watch a haircut. You cannot bear that with a big party going on. I talked to him to come here with me. Party? Oh, oh, that party. I totally forgot about that. But, but now that you remind me, maybe we can still make it. Robert, try to enjoy this. Imagine being in a tiny, quiet, pocket of a park, right here in the middle of the busy, noisy East 50s. A park that's simple and pretty. That waterfall on the wall that always makes me make you back to me. You are some piece of work, lady. <laughs> what I am is like this park here, out of place. And you are like this park. Very lovely. Very. I used to dream I'd come to New York, have two terrific affairs, and then get married. I always knew I was meant to be a wife. Well, how come all we never got married? I mean, why did you ask me? You want to marry me? I did. I, I honestly did in the beginning, but, you know, I never thought you would, so I don't know. Oh, I would. I've never understood why you never asked me. So you wanted to marry me, and I wanted to marry you. Well, <laughs> how the hell did we end up such good friends? Robert, I never let you know what a good, good man I think you are, and how much you've meant. Robert, I... Robert, I brought you out here because I wanted to tell you a lot. I'm moving back up to Cape Cod. I'm getting married. Married? Some people still get married, you know. Do you suddenly fall in love or something? I'll be a good wife. I want real things now. A husband, a family. I don't want to keep running around this city like I'm having a life. Yeah, the problem is you want to build. That's the hardest thing in the world to get. Thank you for your part. You're welcome. The see it and I, we just don't fit. I think there's a time to come to New York and a time to leave. Enjoy your party. I meet is my new best friend. Oh, 
I go uptown, like to the dentist or something, and I swear, suddenly, I want to cry because I think, oh my god, I'm uptown! <laughs> and 14th Street, well, I don't know why anybody talks about any place else because that right there is the center of the universe. 14th Street! That's humanity, 14th Street. That's everything. And if you don't like it there, they got every subway you can make to take it where you like it better. Oh, God bless 14th Street. This city, I kiss the ground a bit. Someday, you know what I want to do? I want to get all dressed up in black. Black dress, black shoes, hat, everything black. And go sit in some bar at the end of the counter and drink cry. <laughs> that is my idea of honest to God sophistication. I mean, that is New York. <laughs> you always make me feel like I got the next line. What is it with you? Well, I've never met anybody like you. Me neither. <laughs> you know what the city is where a person can feel it. It's in a person's ass. If you're really part of the city, relaxed, cool, in the whole flow of it, your ass is like this. If you're just living here, running around, uptight, not really part of the city, your ass is like this. I hesitate to ask. <laughs> That's a fascinating theory, fascinating. And at this particular moment, extraordinarily accurate. <laughs> Christian name, but please, on my knees, there's a human life at stake. 
Listen, everybody, I'm afraid you didn't hear, but you want to see a crazy person fall apart in front of you. But he has no we can make it really feel like you know about us and losing our identity. Like, I'll put my hand on the back, and he said to see him, but I'm not going to be able to do it. So I'm not getting married, he's a bit but I'm not getting married. Thank you all, but I'm not getting married. They're all, but they're not getting married. They don't tell fair, but I'm not getting married. Stay. Whoever wrote this note 
or reads it, I love you. Oh, thank you. Thank her, the phantom. She leaves notes like that everywhere. Pam, no person can stand on that sweetness. No but a human can stand on that everlasting affection. Jamie, don't you think we should go? I can't. Jamie, if anybody should be married, it's you. Tell them, Robert. Oh, I heard told me. Who's sorry to tell Robert? Pam, I, I can't tell anybody anything like that. I guess whatever's meant to be will happen. I see. Um, listen, I'm, I'm going to call and say that we'll be a little late. That we'll be late, and the, you know, the guests will be arriving soon, and I think they'll want to know. Jamie, do you see what you're doing to yourself? Do you know that if other people did what you do to yourself, they could be put in jail? Come on. Look. Oh, look. It's starting to rain. Well, it's starting to rain, and the line's busy. But guess who I ran into on the way over here? You don't remember Helen Kincaid? Okay, well, I almost didn't recognize her. She's so fat and merry and blouse. <laughs> Jamie, come on. We're late. I can't do it, Pam. I don't know how I ever let it get this far. Oh, would you look at that? Now it's really starting to rain. It's a flood. It's a sign. Thank you, God. Now explain it to her. Jamie, come on. All our friends are leaving. That's just no reason, Pam. I'm just, I'm so afraid. Of what? I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I mean, maybe you're not really right for me. I mean, maybe nobody is. I mean, I've never seen one good marriage in my whole life. Never. You just see what you look for, you know? I've seen a lot. Listen, Jamie, married people are no more marriage than musicians are music. Okay, just because some of the people might be wrong, doesn't matter. It is still right. Yes, well, I'll, I'll put that on the sale for Pam. I love being emotional. I'm as sick as can be. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I just don't love you enough. do, I guess. I don't know if it was right, you would have gone through with it. That's, that's what I think anyways. Jamie, marry me. What? Marry me. Thank you. 
Yes. Yourself? Yes. Really? Yes. Well, it's just charming. <laughs> did you really do it all yourself? Yes. Why? Did you hear that I didn't? No, oh, but look. This, this is just precious. Yes. Uh, oh, well, thank you. You know, I never really spend any time in my apartment, but I like it. Oh, it's terribly clever. See how nicely all the furniture is placed in areas to keep so warm and sweet and tough. <laughs> See that? And the choice of color is so simple and relaxing and masculine. Oh, I love that. <laughs> Isn't that cake one, Tristan? This? Yeah. Yes, I'll take it. Yeah. You know, I always like my apartment, but I, I mostly just pass through the living room to, to get to the bedroom, to go to the bathroom, to get ready to go out and go out again. Do you never really spend much time in here? And it's so dear. But maybe that's why you like it so much. If you don't spend much time in it, keep special and important. That's it. And here is the bedroom. You love it. <laughs> I can tell. Well, you know, I can always look for another place. perspiration, and 
and we just left. You know, we, we drove to one of those strips where they have all those motels, and we didn't even say anything the whole car ride, but she just sat so close to me, so close. And then we got inside, and, and you know, she, we started touching it and kissing and laughing and holding, and then she said that I should go out and get champagne and baby oil, and we get beautifully high and rub the oil on, well, you know. <laughs> Anyway, uh, I went out to get to a, a drugstore and a liquor store to find the baby oil and the champagne, and, and I was on my way back, and I could not find the motel, <laughs> and I never saw her again. <laughs> well, that's the most extraordinary story I've ever heard. I know it is. And that poor girl, you drove around for three hours? Four. Well, I spent all night trying to find a motel with, with sweat running down my face and my hands trembling. Oh, that girl, I just don't know to say her too. That is so sad. I know, it is, it is very sad. <laughs> but, Robert, those stories don't really follow. I don't see the connection. Unless, oh, you must have thought that poor girl as a new butterfly. Yes, yes, that's it.
shed. You had a few others, 
dancing, huh? Larry, what the hell was all that carrying on? What was that? I asked you to dance. I only dance when you can touch. I don't think standing, bumping around, and making an ass of oneself is a dance. I find it unbelievably humiliating to see my own husband flouncing around the dance floor, jerking and sashaying all over the place like Ann Miller. Take off the red shoes, Larry. Off! Was that that good? Very good. Uh, amazing. Terrifically good. Joanne, I love it when you're jealous. Kiss me. I hated dinner. I hated the opera. And I hate you. What I need is more to drink. And look at Bobby. How desperately he needs more to drink. Two bourbons and a vodka finger, sir! You know, we are at an age where we are too young for the old folks, but too old for the young ones. We're nowhere. So I say we drink to us. To us! To the generation gap! We are the generation gap! Were they staring at me? Let them. Let them, those bras. What else have they got to do? All dressed up with nowhere to go. God, what time is it? In real life? Someone get me another drink. Oh, you already did. Yeah. Oh, gross. I'd like to propose a toast. Here's to the ladies who lunch. Everybody laugh. 
work for something. Now every place is not unlike an operating room, for Christ's sake. Hmm? I, I never smoked. Why? I don't know, I meant to. Does that count? Meant to? Meant to? Story of your life, meant to. Jesus, you are lifted right out of the crap of having case history. You're always outside looking in the window while everyone else is inside dancing at the party. Now I insist you smoke your first compromise. No, thank you. Joanne, honey. Yes. It's fine. You smoke. I'll watch. Watch? Did you hear yourself? Did you hear what you did? I don't, I don't want one. Because you're weak. I hate people who are weak. That's the best. Better than Prozac. You know, smoking may be the only thing that separates us from the lower form. One split. Of what? See, every day Joanne tests me to see if I'll go away. If I see her, my wife could pack up to leave, just so I'll ask her to stay. My mother was a very difficult woman. My father left her, and he regretted it until the day he died. Now me? Hey. I married this wildly conceited woman with no self-esteem. I mean, she's, I got a wife who still has a hard time believing she found a guy she daily fascinates. And unlike my father, I'm a very happy man. You know, Bobby, she doesn't act like this when you're not around. I hope you get to meet the real Joanne sometime. She really is a perfect lady. And Bobby, if you do decide to get married, make sure you find someone just like Joanne. Don't ever get married, Bobby. Why would you? I don't know, for company like everybody else. Who else? Everybody else that ever fell in love and got married. I know both couples, and they're both divorced. <laughs> oh, Larry, you interrupted me. See what happens when you rush me? I wanted to toast my second husband. It's late. I'm going for the John. And when I come back, we're leaving. This holiday's ending, OK? I, I got the check. Oh, damn, I know you still have to pay the check. Or maybe buy the place. <laughs> yeah, it is a comfort to have rich friends. But yeah, I, I do like to pay sometimes. Oh, well, can you talk me into it? <laughs> you have a good, good husband, Joanne. He's, he's a good man. Anyway, thank you for the evening. I was, I was feeling really low, really depressed. I'm glad I went out. Boy, I, I drank, but you really put it away tonight. Now, the last couple times we've gone together, I've woken up with shameful hangovers. Uh, abominable. We, we may be doing permanent damage. Think of that. And I don't know what to make of the fact that you only drink with me. I guess it's not unflattering. I hope I don't depress you. I, we have good times, and it's a good, whatever you say. No, I don't care for a cigarette, if that's what you're trying to scare me into. I'm a product of my generation, and I don't smoke. My age group is, is a very uptight age group. And middle age is dragging up that old gang of mine. Woo! <laughs> it is drunk out tonight. What are you staring at, Joanna? Huh? My charisma? Well, stop looking at my charisma. When are we going to make it? I beg your pardon? I said, when are we going to make it? Oh, what's wrong with now? There's my place. It's free tomorrow after two. Larry goes to the gym, then straight to the office. Don't talk. Don't do your folksy hair routine with me. You're a terribly attractive man. The kind of man most women want but never seem to get. I'll take care of you. Yeah, but who will I take care of? Did you hear yourself? Uh, I, I didn't mean that. Oh, I hear a door open that's been stuck a long time. Like I haven't looked at that, and at marriages and all that. And what do you what do you get for it? What do you get? <coughs> well, the check is paid. What's wrong? I've looked at that. I, I've looked at marriages and all that. I, and what do you get for it? What do you get?
What do you get?
Do you think something's wrong? No. I think something's right. So do I. I called every joint in town. It's been over two hours. Maybe he forgot. How could someone forget a surprise birthday? Or maybe the surprise is on us. I think I get the message. Come on, Larry. Let's go home. Yes, I think we should. Yeah, I think we should go now. Maybe we should leave him a note. Maybe we should leave him alone. I'll call him tomorrow. Don't. I won't. Say enough? What? Nothing. Okay. All together, everyone.